the new train line between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv connects two cities that are so close to one another and yet so, so different. The new line that opened in 2020 made traveling between the two most important cities in Israel so much easier. This train line also stops at TLV airport, so if you are planning to visit Israel and use public transportation, which I recommend doing, then this video is going to be very helpful. And if you are debating whether you should stay in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv, I'm also going to help you make the right decision there. Let's start with the pros and cons of using the train. The train line is fast and cheap and buying a ticket is easy. You can pay with cash, credit cards, RavCav, check out my video about that, or you can use the apps. The biggest disadvantage of the train is that it doesn't run on weekends, so from Friday afternoon to Saturday night. It doesn't run on Jewish holidays, and it doesn't run in the middle of the night. If you were to take all the hours that the train doesn't operate in a year, it would be about two months. So how do you know if the train is running when you need it? They have a website. I will leave a link below. But if you look for trains to TLV Airport on the train's website, you won't find any. TLV Airport has three English names in Israel. TLV Airport, Ben Gurion Airport, and Natbag. The funny thing, or maybe the confusing thing for you as a tourist, is that the train use all three names. I may be mistaken, but I think that on their website, they use Ben Gurion Airport. On the boards in the station, they use TLV Airport. And inside the train, they use Natbag. Like, what can I say? Welcome to Israel. How are you supposed to know these kinds of things? You're not. You have to like and subscribe to my channel to know about that. If you don't subscribe, you might miss the airport and find yourself in the city of Modi'in, which is not only one of the most boring places you can go in Israel, but it's also the divorce capital of Israel. So if you don't want to get divorced, subscribe to my channel. Now, let's talk about the train stations in Tel Aviv. There are four of them. You will probably need Hashalom station or this station, Savidor. There are lots of bus lines from these stations. And the good thing about Savidor is that here you can change to the very new light rail of Tel Aviv. The name of the light rail station is Arlozorov. You could, of course, take a taxi, but remember that of all the things tourists like about Israel, taxi drivers get the lowest score. Now, let's take the train. There's a train every 30 minutes, and the ride takes about 40 minutes. From Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, most of the journey is underground or over bridges. Jerusalem is high up in the mountains. The train station in Jerusalem is 80 meters deep, one of the deepest train stations in the world, so it takes a while to get from the platform to the entrance. In the station, as in all train stations, there are also elevators, and they are all wheelchair accessible. Once you've headed out, you have the light rail. Chances are that you will need to go in this direction, as it leads to the old city and the city center. The only station you might need in the other direction is the last station, Mount Herzl. There you have Yad Vashem and all the Mount Herzl memorials. If you follow my hotel and hostel recommendations, you will be taking the light rail to the city center. City Hall station is the closest to the old city, but let's say you need to take the bus. So where is the central bus station? If you look at the map, you will see that it is right here. But where is it? So some lines are here, some are on the other side of the train station, but all the intercity buses are in this building. This is the main bus station. On the third floor, you have all the buses. And now let's talk about the most important thing. When you visit Israel, which end of the train line should you stay at? Tel Aviv or Jerusalem? On the classic tour, tourists stay two nights in Tel Aviv, three nights in the Galilee, and three nights in Jerusalem. 
But let's say that you only have three nights in Israel or that you're coming for business or conference and have one or two days off. Well, should you stay Jerusalem or Tel Aviv? If you ask me, I will always say Jerusalem, but that's because I'm a tour guide and all Israeli tour guides will tell you that Jerusalem is more interesting than Tel Aviv. Jerusalem will always come first, Masada and the Dead Sea will come second, and then Tel Aviv will take third place. But not everyone is interested in holy sites, history, archaeology, and politics. Or rather, they are interested in all that, but they don't want to spend too much time in Jerusalem. I have a friend from Tel Aviv who says, yes, by all means, visit Jerusalem. But the place to live is Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv has its charm. It's like a combination of New York and Ibiza. And there are so many good looking people in Tel Aviv. One in every four people is gorgeous. In Jerusalem, it's more like one in 13. So it all boils down to what you prefer. Holy sites or good looking people? Now, seriously. There are plenty of things to do in both places and it really does depend on what kind of person you are. Are you more lying on a beach, art shop, contemporary history? Or are you more into understanding what has gone and what is going on in Jerusalem, one of the most important places in the world? The wonderful thing is that you can easily wake up in Tel Aviv, visit Jerusalem and then come back to Tel Aviv or vice versa. If you have limited time, you can of course stay one night in Tel Aviv and one night in Jerusalem. But when it comes to accommodation, I think that less is more. Being in a new place where you don't understand the language, where everything is new, the weather is different, it's quite a stress for the body and the mind. And changing hotels all the time only adds to the stress. If you stay even three nights in one place, you get to know the people a bit, the area, the bus station is there, the old city is there. It lowers your stress levels and allows you to enjoy yourself more. I've made two videos about this train line. One covers how to get from the airport to Jerusalem and one covers how to get from the airport to Tel Aviv. Make sure you check them out because they are full of useful tips. I also recommend you check out my hotel and hostel recommendations, as well as all my digital tours. After all, taking a train is all well and good, but you visit Israel to understand the sites. All the links will be here below. Yalla bye.